Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at part one of your fourth quarter quadratic function baseball task. We're going to be looking at two functions that model a hit trajectory. I know in part one of your project, you have three, just to simplify or speed things up a little bit. I'm going to be going over how we can fill in that table of values that we're looking for of maximum height, distance at that maximum height, landing distance, initial contact, all those things, and how Desmos can be utilized to help us accomplish that. All right, so if we start to take a look at the two functions that we're given in this sample here, we're looking at Ioannis Cespedes, which I'm going to call g of x, his function, that's going to model his hit, and Michael Conforto, I'm going to call h of x, that's going to model his hit path. And just for clarity purposes, we'll say the Mets this past week played at Miami. So we'll be considering that when we're analyzing whether or not this is a home run. Miami has a wall that's 330 feet from home plate and it's eight feet tall. Okay, so because these functions are given in vertex form, some of these we can fill in relatively easily. Vertex form, we know the vertex is clearly visible just by looking at the function itself. So if I'm looking at cespedes, which I'll start filling out in blue here. That minus 150 in the parentheses, if we apply our IHOP rule, that tells me the vertex is at positive 150, the x value, and the y value is at 70, that number on the end. So 150 in this case is going to represent the distance at the maximum height. So I already know that right off the bat. And the 70 is going to represent the maximum height. And again, this is because it was in vertex form, and I could do the same thing for Conforto. The vertex is right there. I just have to pick it out. No, not to mix these two up. Maximum height, we're talking about the vertical distance in the air, whereas distance at maximum height means how far it was horizontally at that maximum height. So in other words, for Cespedes, it was 150 feet from home plate when it reached that peak. And for Conforto, his was at 175. Okay, so the next two we're going to have to utilize Desmos, but let's first understand what they are referencing. Height of contact, that means when the ball was first hit, okay? Although we're not dealing with time with these graphs, we're dealing with horizontal versus vertical distance, this is still basically where our problem is beginning, when the ball hits the bat. So this is where x equals zero. Okay, basically our y-intercept. Now we can find that just by simply, if you have a graphing calculator on you, basically plugging in a zero. Or if you have a graphing calculator again, typing in the function, and at zero you could just simply look at your table. Now for landing distance, where this ball would land, we're looking for a root where y equals zero. Obviously it's hit off the ground to begin with, so that initial part is not a root where it's first hit, something like two or three feet in the air, let's say when a bat hits a ball. When it lands, we're looking for that one positive root where y equals zero. So in a second, we're gonna take a look at Desmos. So I'm gonna have these functions typed in and we'll try and see if we can find these intercepts relatively easy. Okay, so I went ahead and typed in each function here. I even built a little function for our wall. So we can clearly see that Cespedes' hit is not gonna be a home run. We can check the vertex that we found just by visually looking at the function. It is at 150, 70, reaches a maximum height of 70 feet, 150 feet horizontally from home plate. But we were, what we were interested in was this value over here, which was the one positive root of this function. And that's going to tell us our landing distance. We're going to round to the nearest tenth. So we're going to say it lands 302.8 feet from home plate. And what's nice about Desmos, which would make this a little bit easier than your graphing calculator, you can find that simply just by hovering your mouse over the root. They pick out, or Desmos automatically creates these points of the vertex, the roots, the intercepts, without you even having to worry about functions. On your graphing calculator, the buttons are a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit more of a process. And we could even find the y-intercept. Once again, just hover over there and you see the two points already highlighted. We don't care about that root on the left. That would be negative. But what we do care about is the y-intercept. And that tells us the initial contact. Where was this ball first hit? It was hit 2.5 or 2.5 feet in the air. 
Okay, so that was relatively pretty easy. Once we typed them in, just double check that you are typing the functions in. As we know on the project, just similar to these, there's a lot of decimals, you know, some room for error if you are typing them in carelessly. And same process for Conforto. Once again, we see the vertex matches what we said. We can see this passes over the wall. It lands 353.9 feet from home plate, rounding to the nearest tenth. And the initial height is two and three quarters, or 2.75 feet. Again, this is just by you know hovering your mouse or clicking the points that show up. Okay, we can also see at 330 feet, it's well over the wall in Miami here, which was eight feet high, I believe you said. So this is almost 16 feet high in the air. Now the last component of this, after I fill in the table, is going to be sketching a graph. If you look on the front page of your uh, project sheet, you're going to have to sketch a graph. Obviously, we want the vertex. You're not going to be able to pull out a, a whole lot of nice points, but just getting some points, and you could even utilize Desmos for this, maybe some nice clean points like 100 and something like that, just so we get an idea of, or you know, it can help us sketch a graph where we're not just plotting you know, the vertex and trying to estimate where everything is. So Desmos is pretty nice with the table as well. So like I said, anything I want to type in here, 100, obviously I'd want my vertex, which was 175, 250 would be on the other side of that. And I'm just going to do this for Conforto, and you could obviously use the same process for Cespedes. But I would use my initial contact, I found symmetrical points on either side of the vertex. They're not nice, they're decimals, but again, this is just a sketch. There's a lot of decimals in this problem, so anything like that will work. And obviously we want our landing spot, which we'll pull out from our table in a second. Again, that was at 350, almost 354, 353.9. So this is gonna help us with the very last component of part one after we fill in the table of just creating a quick sketch of our graph. And this is what our completed table will look like. Remember these top two rows we found just by looking at the vertex form that we were given. So no Desmos, no graphing calculator required for a maximum height or distance at maximum height. For height at contact, you could find algebraically by plugging in a zero for x or simply highlighting the y-axis on Desmos or on your graphing calculator looking next to zero on your table or plugging in a zero if you know how to do that. For landing distance, this is our positive root. This is where the graph hits the x-axis, or where y, or where the function, equals zero. Once again, you can highlight, you'll see a point, you simply have to click it. For any decimals, a lot of decimals will come out in these functions round to the nearest tenth. And for the home run, in this case, in my little sample here, I was looking at um, Miami, the Marlins, where their wall was, was 330 feet from home plate and eight feet in the air, or eight feet tall. Now just by looking at Cespedes, we see that he lands at 302 point, or his ball lands at 302.8 feet, not even reaching the wall. So without even looking at a graph, just by looking at this table alone, we obviously know this is not gonna be a home run. It's gonna be around 28, 20, excuse me, 27.2 feet short of even hitting the wall. So obviously it's not gonna pass over the wall. For Michael Conforto, we could see it lands past the wall. That's not enough to say whether or not it'll be a home run yet, because this could have bounced off the wall for all we know. Um, what we would wanna do is evaluate 330 feet itself and see one of two things is gonna happen. It's, it's either gonna be over eight feet or it's going to some, fall somewhere below 8 feet and hit off the wall and obviously not be a home run. So I can observe my graph to determine this, or I can simply, even just by on Desmos, utilizing the table feature. I mean, you can type in any X value you want. If I evaluate 330, which again, this is where the wall is, I get an output or a Y value of approximately 15 0.95. In other words, Conforto's hit trajectory has a coordinate at 330, 15.95, meaning at 330 feet, his ball is almost 16 feet in the air, which would clearly pass over the wall. 
So we can see this visually. We can also kind of prove this by coming up with the x value of the wall and show that the y value is larger or higher. And clearly will pass over that wall of 8 feet. Okay, and for the last component, I've already gone ahead and sketched the two graphs here. We can see Cespedes in red and Conforto's hit in blue. I also drew a little line on your paper for the green monster. Your wall, your home run wall is already indicated. Mine's obviously going to be a little bit different because this is in a different ballpark. As we can see, Conforto is passing over the wall, whereas Cespedes falls a little bit short. Okay, and this is the key part with this component is that it's a rough sketch. A lot of these values, as we saw, are you know not nice, clean numbers, if you will. There's a lot of decimals. Even my scale, if you notice, only goes by tens with every 40 indicated with a number mark. So a lot of these points, you know, 52.75, this and that, it's going to be very hard to plot. As long as we get a rough sketch or, you know, a few points to plot, we can sketch out what this parabola will look like. So I'll go through my process here of how I did this. Although it's a sketch, I don't want to just put a random curve on the paper. For Cespedes, I did plot the root, plot the initial value around for Cespedes. It was two and a half feet. Okay. Um, the vertex, I obviously want to make sure is, you know, pretty close to being correct. For Cespedes, it was 150.70. So I estimated that, you know, I don't have, it's not exactly labeled on the axes, but I plotted it to the best of my abilities. And then what I did was add another two points. If I just use those three, the y-intercept, the root, and the vertex, that's going to be hard to connect. So I added a point to the left and to the right of the vertex. And I chose symmetrical points here. So I went 50 feet or 50 units to the left of the vertex, which gives me this point at 100 and 50 feet to the right of the vertex, which gave me 200. Those outputs I found, again, using my table on Desmos, they're around 62 and a half. So I plotted those two points. It just gives me a few more points to play with here. It makes it easier to connect as I'm kind of, I put my hand on the uh, y-intercept and I sketch it across. The more points I have, the better. If you want to go ahead and find, you know, a sixth and seventh point, again, you want to make sure they're symmetrical. So make sure they're an equal distance um, away from the vertex. Something maybe over here at 50 and something on the other side will make it um, even easier for you to connect it. And the same thing for Conforto. Obviously, his vertex was a little bit different, but I ended up using, just more or less by coincidence, the same um, points. I chose 100, which in this case was 75 feet from the vertex, and 75 feet to the right-hand side was at 250. Okay, so symmetrical points. I'm around the vertex, and I'm finding those points, once again, just by using Desmos, my graphing calculator. Not that they're nice points. This isn't going to work as nice as some of the problems we see on a test or in class. That's why this is a rough sketch. Estimating um, where points go and coming out with a nice smooth curve where you can see everything that we talked about in the problem clearly happening. You want to make sure your vertex is there. You want to make sure your landing point is somewhat accurate, and obviously where we begin. Okay? So this is part one of your project. Obviously, you guys will be graphing three hit trajectories, so it might be a little bit more crowded. Um, and once again, you're just sketching it out, so make sure you have those key points labeled and identified. And that wraps up everything for part one. There will be videos for part two and three, but if you have any questions with part one, feel free to let me know by email or ask me in class. Thank you for watching, guys.